Hey folks, Ray from Love You RV. So I'm back with my February update. Uh, we've been on the road on this trip four months now, two months to go. So I'm just going to let you know what we did in February, where we camped. I'll go and show you each of the campsites and maybe let you know where we dumped and filled and where we got supplies, that sort of thing. Um, this was basically the, the, the places we went. Um, when last I left you, we were down in near Ajo, down here and we really liked that scenic loop so we went back and we were there at the end of January and basically maxed out our 14 day limit before moving on. From there we decided to head back to the, the west and really wanted to return to a Cibola National Wildlife Refuge just down here a little bit south of uh, Blythe, California actually on the Arizona side of the Colorado River but it would be a quite a long trip to do that. We went up 85 here, all the way back to 10, and then across 10, and it would have been added a little bit, of, about an hour extra time. So we went and uh, camped for uh, two nights at one of the quartzite BLM. Um, it's called Roadrunner. It's one of the ones on the outskirt of town here. You just go in and register. There was a guy on duty right out a bit of information and it's free camping in the desert. So we, uh, I kind of stocked up in uh, quartzite. I went and got some fuel and propane. We were running low on that. And then we went over to Cibola. It's only about an hour's trip. And we camped right across from the National Refuge here. And then uh, we pretty well stayed there, I think about 10 days. Uh, had a, quite a big storm go through there. We had a dust storm. But we got to go around the refuge a bit. And then we wanted actually to go, we had planned to go and visit Death Valley this trip. Now that we have the Starlink uh, satellite dish, um, we can go to Death Valley where they have terrible cell service, if, if any at all. But with the satellite uh, dish, we can get good internet in there now. And, uh, and we could do some dry camping there because <clears throat> the weather wasn't going to be very warm. The southwest in February and into March has been rather cool and even windy and rainy. So we needed to hunker down somewhere because there was a, a bit of wind and storm. So we went over to uh, Salton Sea where we've camped before, Salt Creek in the Salton Sea State Recreation Area. To get there, I just got back on this 78, went across to Brawley and then up 111 to the Salton Sea. Stayed there for a few nights, and then we had a good weather window of uh, two days. So we uh, headed out from there and went up back to Indio here. Um, we were able, Salton Sea has a, a dump and fill station there. So we dumped our tanks and filled up the water and right in Indio, they have a really good, right off of 10, there's a good Walmart. So we stopped there and really stuck, stocked up on, on our food because there's not much grocery shopping in Death Valley unless you want to drive out about an hour. So to get to Death Valley, it was a long trip from down there all the way up to Death Valley. So we needed a kind of a halfway point. So we decided to overnight at Amboy Crater. We did that last year. Great overnight spot right in the middle of the Mojave Desert. To get there, we went back 10, and then we drove through Joshua Tree National Park. It was quite a nice day, nice day. It was a little bit breezy up there, but uh, nice to drive through, very scenic. Came down at 29 Palms, and then we went through 29 Palms, and there's another highway that goes this way, and then up over a pass and down into Ant to where Amboy is. Just overnighted there, then the next day, we continued on to Death Valley, um, went up to 40, down 40 a bit, then back over, caught Interstate 15 to Baker. And once we got to Baker, there's this Highway 127. It's probably one of the easiest ways into Death Valley, not too much elevation changes or anything. So we went down through there to Death Valley Junction and then down into the park. I'll just show you some of the, the satellite views of the campsites we were at. So this is the one in Ajo on the scenic loop here. So you can see Ajo's here. And then we go down into here. There's a gravel road that goes around the back over to the kind of over to the west. And we had camped there earlier 
we had camped just down over here. This time we found a really nice spot just off the road down here. There it is there. Yeah, we were camped right up in here. Really pretty spot. Good views. Uh, in Ajo, a good place to dump and fill was a place called Belly Acres RV Park. Uh, it was down in the city, airy town, right across this Olson's uh, Marketplace, which is the big grocery store. So over here is this Belly Acres, and we were able to dump and fill all the time there. Um, I think it was $8 to dump, $4 for water, and the garbage throwaway was free. So it was convenient right across from the, the grocery store there. Uh, there's Here's a kind of look at the Roadrunner area. There's Quartzsite there. It's down maybe you know 20 minutes down the road. It's basically your typical Quartzsite place. It's just all flat, really firm ground, easy to come in. Right in here, there was a guy that was doing registrations of the, for the BLM. I guess it's such a busy place. They have a guy that actually makes sure people don't overstay their 14 days. You have to you know, fill out a little form and post it on your camper. A lot of BLM places, it's all on the honor system, but around Quartzsite, especially in the in the popular times of year, there'll be a, a volunteer doing the registration. Uh, Cibola, what we did is we camped right across from the the Wildlife Refuge's uh, visitor center. Oops. Go down here, you can see the complex here. And then there's a, a drive you can go that you drive all the way around. There's a big loop drive. You drive up through all the fields. Now, usually this area here is uh, ponds, and this time the, the ponds were empty. So usually that would be full of ducks and waterfall, but it's kind of disappointing. There was no water there. Maybe it's got something to do with the low Colorado water, you know, Lake Mead, Lake Powell, that. There is a kind of a hiking trail back here. And there used to be a pond there as well, but that seems to be gone. So where did we camp? Just right across the road here. There's some campsites up in here. You follow this gravel road. Um, there's kind of a sketchy grate to go across. You go across this uh, this uh, kind of grate, and it's uh, kind of sketchy to go across, and there's a little bit of a rough road. So... You may not like to do that. If you don't uh, aren't comfortable with that, there's another campsite over here called this Oxbow Recreation Area. And they have a, a BLM, a pay BLM area, but they also have down here, some people call it the Hippie Hole. And uh, you can go camp down there for free. I don't know if they're going to change that because I saw they put in a bunch of kind of shelters and they're and it looks like what they're doing is putting in power here i saw not hooked up yet but there was some some uh, look like uh, power pedestals in there so maybe they're, they're changing that around and are going to charge people to to camp right there in the future so we stayed there for like i say maybe about 10 days and moved over to the salton sea and camped in the salton sea state recreation area down here at salt creek it's one of our our favorite places to camp down there. So where were we here? Yeah, there's the roads coming in. And there's just some primitive camping all along here. They have garbage and some kind of just pit toilets, kind of porta potties out there. And then you can let's think it was about ten dollars a night to camp there. And then down down the road a bit is the headquarters camp and you can go and get water and dump and, and fill there. I have a really big, huge uh, dump station. It's $7 fee. Um, I forgot at Cibola where we would where we would dump and fill. There is a place um, close by, but they, they weren't open. I think I forget what the name is. It's like a little store where you could dump and fill. So I had to drive back up into Blythe. It's about a half-hour drive. Oops, went past Blythe. Yeah, right in here. Now there is in here, they have a city um, dump station that's $7, but it has no water. So if you're just dumping, you can go to that. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, Blythe Wastewater Treatment. 
So if I go down in here, you can see this little loop here, easy in, easy out. And there's two dump stations in there and a pay box for $7. Um, so I used that, but I also used over here at the Cove uh, Resort. You can go in there, it's $20 for dump and fill. And you can get rid of your garbage too. Um, there used to be a place you could get water over here somewhere, like a little store with a laundry, but uh, went in there and they, they no longer have have water as far as the guy told me. So that was the place I used there. So after, like I say, we left Salton Sea, we drove up, really nice drive, back through and over, over Joshua Tree, up here, drove through the park, and basically right through the, the Mojave Wilderness to Amboy Crater, right near the old, there's our old Route 66 goes through here. And there you can see the black crater right there. And right over here, it's really nice. It's all been, oh, it's all brand new pavement and everything. And there's some shelters and stuff. There was one trailer over here parked in the one of the RV lanes overnighted but there's an overflow parking lot here and we just overnighted there we were the only rv that night there's train tracks along here so if that bugs you we don't we don't care it doesn't really bother us they roll through every once in a while at night so <clears throat> the only thing, one tip i can give you is this this uh it's route 66 road here i think it's a national historic road or something well it's had washouts and stuff so you you can't go, the road is blocked back to Interstate 40 going one way. Um, and then the other way I noticed signs that said 10 ton limit. So I think they have some really old bridges and uh, they're not really, been, they're slowly rebuilding them, but there's old timbers and they've had washouts. So I, I saw that sign. So the way to get back to 40 was a, a little road right down here. I forget the name of it, started with a K. Anyway, you went to that and straight up and connected to 40 there. But it's pretty nice back road. The roads are okay. A little bit broken up in areas, but most of the roads through that route are pretty good. And, and you know, not heavily trafficked or anything. And finally, we've made it down into Death Valley and set up right across from the visitor center here. Now, before we camped in Furnace Creek Campground one time and uh, got a spot in there, but it's a little more expensive and we don't really need the hookups. So I kind of looked at these other two campgrounds. There's this Texas Springs Campground up here. Um, there's not too many spots we can fit our length of RV in there comfortably. And you can see they're quite tightly spaced together and there's quite a few people here. So um, gave up on trying to get a spot in there it's a little more secluded so went down here this is the sunset campground and it's the cheapest it's a $14 a night or if you've got the seniors pass it's half price um, and there's tons of spots in there it never gets too full but I when we drove in I noticed there was one camper up here and I was wondering why is that guy just all by himself and then I noticed a sign saying this area was no generators so there was one guy here and then about, you know, 30 people here. So we pulled in there and set up and then he left the next day. So we were actually the only person here. So kind of well away off to our, our cells. Kind of nice view of the mountains in the in the back there, up there. So anyway, you're up to date with our, our goings on. Um, uh, the rest of this video, I'll just have some uh, footage from some of the wildlife at Cibola when we drove through some of the birds there. And I have a, some footage of our drive, especially the dash cam footage of going through the Mojave Desert. It was quite, quite picturesque. Might be boring to some people, but maybe people would like to see what it's like to drive on the highways in there. And then we'll just finish up with a little picture slideshow. Okay, let's get to it.
Wow. <laughs> Did you see all the yellow hats? Yeah. That's bizarre. It's the great migration of snow geese. They cover at least 100 yards in this tremendous flight. From the green green of the one field to the brown brown of the other field. It's one of nature's remarkable scenes. We are so lucky to be witnessing this amazing migration. Bravo, snow geese, bravo. Oh, there they all go. Go, go, go. It's like one guy decided that was a better spot. Look back at us. Yeah. It's like in a ditch, it's waiting to see if we're going to go by. Look out, duckies.
Baker. Oh, Baker. It has that famous Mad Creek Cafe. Yeah. And the big thermometer. Right. Past three. Maybe I should run. No, but I didn't know. Did you come here when we went to Dumont Dunes? Yeah. And we stopped from Vegas. That was pretty close, wasn't it? 